So in this tutorial we'll be talking about the lumbosacral plexus and all the lumbosacral plexus is is just like the brachial plexus it's simply a collection of nerves that provide sensory, motor and autonomic innervation to the lower limb. The brachial plexus is for the upper limb the lumbosacral plexus is for the lower limb. So this diagram here shows the location of the lumbosacral plexus. Remember that the brachial plexus was located here in the posterior triangle of the neck and it continued downward all the way into the hand. The lumbosacral plexus, like the name implies, is located within the lumbar and sacral region of the vertebra. So it's about this level here and it gives off, shown in red, and it gives off branches that will continue downward both into the into the thigh and all the way down to the leg and foot. Now before we look at the anatomy of the lumbosacral plexus I would like to first go over the anatomy of the posterior abdominal wall. So here is an image that you may already be familiar with. This is the ribs 12, T12, L1, 12, 5, pelvis and the femur. Here from the anterior superior leg spine to the pubic tubercle is the inguinal ligament on both sides. That surface there is the iliac fossa. Okay, and that's the sacrum. So, there's three muscles that make up the posterior abdominal wall. We'll start with the most posterior of the three muscles, and that is your quadratus lumborum. The quadratus lumborum comes from your rib 12 down to your iliac crest, so the surface of the pelvis. To iliac crest and also gives attachments to th the transverse processes of L1 to L5. Okay, so that is your quadratus lumborum. The next muscle is the iliacus muscle. The iliacus muscle comes from the iliac fossa, so like we said, the surface here, and continues downward to attach to the lesser trochanter of the femur. It passes underneath the inguinal ligament. And the most anterior of these three muscles is the psoas muscle. As you can see, I did not pronounce the P. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but psoas muscle. The psoas muscle comes also from rib 12, continues downward, and attaches, just like the iliacus, to the lesser trochanter of the femur. Along the way, it also attaches to the transverse processes of L1 to L5 and it too passes beneath the inguinal ligament. Because the psoas muscle and the iliacus muscle attach to the same part of the femur, the lesser trochanter, the two muscles are collectively known as the iliopsoas muscle. Okay? Psoas plus iliacus is iliopsoas muscle because they both attach to the lesser trochanter of the femur. Next we're going to look at the lumbosacral plexus anatomy shown here. It looks complicated, but we'll go step by step. The first one here at T12, it's not part of the lumbosacral plexus, but it's still important to note it. It is the subcostal nerve that runs just below the rib 12. Next, you have L1. From L1, you have a nerve that is going to split into two. One is the iliohypogastric nerve. The next is the ilioinguinal nerve. From L2, you have a nerve called the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh. A branch from L2 joins a branch from L1 to form the genitofemoral nerve. Okay? Then there is another branch here that also comes from L2 and this branch is called the obturator nerve. From L3 you have a single nerve and that is called your femoral nerve. From L4 you have you don't really have a nerve you have branches that are going to join other nerves so for example one branch is going to join the femoral nerve. Another branch is going to join the obturator nerve. And a third branch is going to join the nerve coming from L5. 
Now, before we move on, note that L1 to L4, these, this is your lumbar plexus. Once you go from L5 down to S4, this is your sacral plexus. Therefore, this branch here that comes from L4 and joins L5 together are known as the lumbosacral trunk. Why? Because from L4 upward you have the lumbar plexus, from L5 down you have the sacral plexus. So this joining of L4 with L5 is a link between the lumbar and sacral plexus and therefore is called the lumbosacral trunk. L5, S1, S2 and S3 give rise to the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body. From the sciatic nerve there are four branches that we are going to look at. These are the superior gluteal nerve, the inferior gluteal nerve, nerve to obturator internus, and nerve to quadratus femoris. Finally, there are three more nerves that we need to look at. The pudental nerve, the perforating cutaneous nerve, also known as inferior clunial nerve, and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. S2, S3, and S4, as you can see from this picture, give rise to the pudental nerve. S2 and S3 give rise to the perforating cutaneous nerve and S1, 2 and 3 give rise to the perforating cutaneous nerve sorry to the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So this part here is most com most confusing but if you follow this uh, diagram I hope you can understand it. So in review we had again the subcostal nerve T12, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves L1, genitofemoral nerve L1, L2, lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh L2, obturator nerve L2, L4, femoral nerve L3, L4, the lumbosacral trunk, L4, L5, the sciatic nerve, L5, S1, S2, S3, superior gluteal, inferior gluteal, nerve to obturator internus, and nerve to quadratus femoris, branches of the sciatic nerve, and the pudental nerve, S2, S3, S4, perforating cutaneous nerve, S2, S3, and posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh. S1, S2, S3. Now before we move on I'd like to just make a quick comment on sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve, although it's the largest nerve in the body, it is actually com composed of two nerves. One is the tibial nerve and the other is the common peroneal or common fibular nerve.